first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello everyone, this is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, we appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here across a number of our different platforms here at Fox 12 Oregon. That's our YouTube channel, kptv.com, and the Fox 12 Oregon apps. So whatever platform you're on, you can download that, watch us live or watch afterward, and we cover a wide range of topics. Today, though, we are talking about winter solstice. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who love the fall, who love winter, and, you know, it's got its, it's, got its tenants, but I'm telling you, the short days... It gets to me after a while. And so, <laughs> thankfully, that's on the verge of starting to change to go back toward more daylight. But we're going to be talking about that and more and what to know about this. We've got Jim Todd from OMSI joining us. And, Jim, always great to have you here on the show um, for all the different topics that we cover with you. But this one, this is coming up. And so I have to ask this because I feel like even though this is science, there's always a debate with people about when solstice actually is. Can we get an answer on that one? Okay, so what happened on, on, on the 21st of December, the sun will be directly over the top of Capricornus. And that will be the point in time that the sun will be at its lowest angle, 21 degrees, for the 45 degrees latitude location for us, at its lowest point of the year. And so that means the sun will stop migrating southward. And then uh, after Saturday, the good news is, it will start moving northward and when the days will start getting longer until we reach the spring equinox in March when it will actually be the point in time that we'll have 12 hour days, 12 hour nights. So that's why there's a lot of celebration to this on the solstice is that in the early day, people were fearing that the sun's gonna to continue to go down, down, down and that we have an internal darkness. It would, the light would never return. And that's where it came about that we have candles, we have Christmas lights, all of the celebration of return of the light. Okay? And so that's what, why uh, the, the early Christian church thought, okay, let's put the Christmas with the solstice and make this a celebration. And so that's what it's all about. That's why we see so many wonderful display of lights. It's a, it's a celebration of the return of the light after the solstice. And that's what it's all about. It's magical. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that that's where all of that came from. I and mean, obviously, so many things, you know, tie together and end up working out. But it's because it was getting so dark. That's why we had, the, that's why Christmas lights started being a thing. Exactly. And the more north that you go from our latitude, the darker it will become until you reach the Arctic Circle on Saturday or this weekend up at the Arctic Circle to have 24 hours of darkness. And so that's the Arctic Circle that's at 23 and a half degrees, which is our Earth tilt. But if you had, if you want to find more sunshine or warmth, head south to Portland. And as you head south, the days will get longer and longer until you get to the southern hemisphere, where they're having the opposite. They're having their summer down in, in the southern hemisphere. And so that's what's kind of unique about this is that and we're kind of in between 45 degrees north. Uh, so that's why we're seeing on, on Saturday, we'll have the sun is going to only have about nine hours of daylight. And so for many people, it's like, oh, finally, we reached that point. And then after that, it will start growing longer and longer until we get to the equinox. And so uh, that's what's unique about the solstice. And so even now, you see that the sun is low and has less time you heat up the air above the ground and it's at that low angle. So that's why the temperature drops during the winter time versus in the summertime, we have nearly 19 hours of daylight, lots of time, high angle sun, all of that. So there's a lot of science behind the solstice. That, yeah, that is uh, fascinating. I'm, I'm more of a fan of the 19 hour time uh, myself personally, but you know, there's, there's tenants for everything. Now, when you see, so when we hit the, the solstice, how many, do we know how many minutes on average will be, uh, of daylight we'll be gaining per day after that? Oh, it's roughly, uh, uh, get, get, get me on that one, Greg. Sorry. Um, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few minutes more. It goes very gradual. Now, what the thing is, though, the word solstice is called sun standing. Okay? So it will be at its lowest angle for a few days, like a pendulum. When the pendulum reaches its peak up, and hang out and before it starts swinging down again, at the bottom of the pendulum is the uh, equinox. It'll pass right through it. So solstice on the summer or winter is done standing 
So we'll see kind of a uh, 21 degree uh, angle of the sun for a few days, but it will come back. The light will come back. We'll just start gradually getting longer again. And that's why we celebrate spring. I love it. I love it. See, I like learning all of this as well, just about the, the history of it and some of the different you know, ways this has been interpreted and way people handle this. Um, throughout, yep. throughout history. And I know too, you know, there's there's stuff that you do there at OMSI too to educate people about this and so much more. Um, but uh, I know there was a note about how specifically you can come there and, and learn about this and, and some of the different things through some of the programs at OMSI. Absolutely. We do show it every day in a planetarium called Star Night Live. And we talk about the current night sky. Of course, in the planetarium, the skies are always clear. And so uh, we're able to see the sky. So people come in, they can learn about the solstice, they talk about the upcoming planet parade that's happening in January. Um, we could talk about uh, what's visible. Now, the good news for astronomers that we have much longer nights to observe uh, during the winter solstice, the longest period of the year. Unfortunately, it's also the coldest. It makes it hard to observe. But down in the south, like Arizona, Texas, and Florida, this is their favorite time of year because down there it's much warmer, but the skies are very long. That's why they really enjoy this time of year. They can observe for hours. And so it's a long night. But for us, it means it's also very cold. But we offer the show daily, uh, twice a day, and they can find out the schedule on, on, on the on the website. Uh, called Star Night Live, and it's a great way to learn about the sky, what's coming up. All the, there's so much happening in our night sky right now. This is a fun way uh, to uh, enjoy the view, but also those of you who get new binoculars or telescope for Christmas, this is a great way to get a good start, to understanding, oh, what, what can I see this month? Or what can I learn? And this is a great way to do it. I love that. Yeah, learning what's up there, and as you mentioned, you know, it, it's uh, it's going to be nice and warm inside the the planetarium there, where you can go in, and also uh, there's no cloud cover, so you can uh, really know what's going on up there. Well, Absolutely. Jim, you know, anything else that you think is uh, important for people to know, or something or interesting for them to know about winter solstice? Well, the winter solstice is something that um, people, when they see and think about it, and say uh, they. I understand now why there's so much Christmas lights and the, the light and we're trying to it's all celebration. It really is. It really should celebrate uh, the return of the light uh, after Saturday. So come out and check it uh, out at the uh, Star Night Live and you can learn more about it. All right. Thanks so much, Jim. Always appreciate having you on. And yeah, we'll probably have to talk about the, the plan, uh, Parade of Planets here at some point as well, um, going into that new year when people can check all that out. But thanks for being here with us. Always like having you on. Okay, happy Tulsa's. Thanks, you too. And uh, for everybody watching, you know this is Fox 12 Now. If it's your first time checking us out, uh, cool. Thanks for, thanks for finding us. We have lots of segments for you to watch on our YouTube channel. As I mentioned earlier, kptv.com or on the Fox 12 Oregon apps. So you can go there, check out everything that we have. If you have something that you think would make for a great segment, a little longer interview, maybe a deeper dive on a story you've seen on another news show, send me an email, Fox 12 Now, Fox 12 Now at kptv.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me, uh, Fox 12 Now at kptv.com. Thanks for joining us. I'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.